Hello and welcome to the Wings for Life World Run 2015. The Wings for Life World Run is the first and only running race in which the entire world can race together simultaneously. This unique race format means that all participants will start running on May the 3rd, 2015, in six continents, 33 countries and 35 locations around the globe at 11 a.m. UTC and equivalent times across the world. By running in the Wings for Life World Run, athletes will not only be participating in a unique global sporting event, but they will also be taking precious steps towards finding a cure for spinal cord injury. Finding a cure is a matter of when, not if. The format of the Wings for Life World Run is a first, not only in running, but also in sporting events in general. Race tracks will be defined, but runners will not be running a set distance. It's all about the catcher car and trying to get as far ahead as each athlete possibly can. A unique event with a heart-stopping finish, only a couple of metres will decide victory and defeat. And even the setup is a breathtaking event with more than 16,000 people from all over the world working hard to get the racetracks ready just in time. Zwo, eins, zwo, test, test, test. The Global Race Centre is in Spielberg, Austria. All technical and broadcast facilities have to be set. It's a big challenge for the team and for the international sport director, Colin Jackson. This is the most anxious time because we want to see all the countries ready to go at 11 UTC, but also that we get all the runners assembled and ready to set off at that particular time. So it's a very busy time at all the locations and also here uh, at uh, Global Race Control because for us we have to make sure we are ready to go on time as well. So lots of eyes are looking at screens and keeping ourselves really busy. Still a little bit nervous, but uh, you'd expect that. Servus aus Österreich. Valeu Brasil, valeu Wings for Life. Pozdrav iz Hrvatske. I'd like to welcome you. Namaste. Hello from Stavanger, Norway. Hello from Porto, Portugal. All the best from Armenia. Hello from South Africa. Yeah. Say hi everyone. Ten forty-five UTC. Fifty minutes till the race is on. Europe, Asia, North America, South America, Africa, and Oceania. Six continents. All race start at exactly the same moment. One hundred and one thousand two hundred and eighty registered runners running for those who can't. Spinal cord injury is one of the most devastating types of injuries that can occur to a person. Wings for Life plays this really essential role um, that can't be filled or won't be filled by the government or by pharmaceutical companies. The eventual goal is shared by almost every project, but nobody can predict today that this is the one route to take to get to that goal, and we need to pursue many routes. The reason for founding Wings for Life was a very personal one. Following the tragic accident of a young Austrian man in 2003, Hannes Kindergartner, his father, Heinz Kindergartner, a two times motocross world champion, he teamed up with his best friend Dietrich Mateschitz, the founder of Red Bull, after the accident, and they invited leading scientists and neurologists uh, to Salzburg to find out about the current state of affairs in spinal cord research. If we want to push further and faster the work that's done 
in spinal cord injury, we need to have organizations, we need to have foundations that are targeted, whose sole function is to target and focus on, on spinal cord injury. The goal of Wings for Life is clearly defined. Through financing and supporting cutting-edge research and clinical trials around the globe, we are aiming to find a cure for spinal cord injury. And before we kickstart 2015, let's take a look back at the best of the action from the first ever Wings for Life World Run. More than 50,000 registered runners on 34 tracks across the globe. And a surprise in the women's competition in Stavanger, Norway. The winner, Elise Molvik, in 54.8 kilometers before she was caught by the catcher car. And a breathtaking finale for the men's competition. Limawak Ketima from Ethiopia, winning by just under 100 meters ahead of the Peruvian runner, Remigio Kuman. After 78.58 kilometers, the Ethiopian taking the 2014 crown. And they're back here again in 2015. Five minutes to go to the start of the second Wings for Life at World Run. And the two big names from 2014 are on the starting line in St. Polten, Lower Austria. And the star of the show in the women's competition, Elise Molvik, has opted to race in Norway again. On 35 tracks, on six continents. The world starts running at the same time. Pero no hay línea de arribada. 30 minutes later, the catcher car globally begins the chase. Pargo to parge, kuburun umjiginda. Jusqu'à ce que tous les coureurs soient passés et terminés. And the last person scored. The global champion of the Wings for Life World Run. And here is the countdown. Whether it be the nighttime in Japan or sunrise in Florida, the atmosphere across the globe is electric because 35 locations will all start at the very same time. Kakheti in Georgia, two venues in Germany, Darmstadt and, of course, Munich. Alanya in Turkey. Here is the world ready to go. There he goes, a Wings for Life World Run 2015 is underway. And what a sensational start. Over 101,280 runners are on track, participating at one of the world's largest global running events ever. The atmosphere is electric, and look how important it is for some of these athletes to play their part in the Wings for Life Foundation spinal cord research. Whether it be the night time, and there are three races that will run through the night, whether it is sunrise or whether it's the heat of the mid-afternoon or the clear skies of the early morning, the weather will be a key factor in this year's competition. For some of those runs on the coastline, we're expecting high winds and heavy rain. Look at the views of Cape Town. Absolutely spectacular, but it's down on the running track where the business will be done today. Alton in Switzerland, again another massive participation. And starting off on the racetrack in Silverstone, over to South America, Santiago in Chile, Rouen, France, is another impressive track with some spectacular views. Not the best of weather in Portugal. The wind and the rain coming off the Atlantic Ocean in Porto. And a new venue for Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. This will be one of the hottest races of the 2015 Wings for Life World Run. A little cooler in Alanya, the beautiful seaside resort in Turkey. Two venues in Germany, one in Munich, where the weather looks to be a little dull and rainy, a second in Darmstadt. Over to Ireland and their capital, Dublin. Dublin. 
over to Sweden and a gentleman we've been told to watch very carefully. He's prepared meticulously for this competition. It's Aaron Andersson in the wheelchair and big things are expected of the Swedish wheelchair athlete. He's in a strong frame of mind and is determined to put down a special distance. One of two stops in North America, California and Florida hosting the Wings for Life World Run, as is a Bratislava in Slovakia and Taiwan, the city of Yilan. The Wings for Life World Run, one of the biggest running events ever. Now, the Global Race Centre in Spielberg is the heart of this immensely complex and technical operation and where all the TV feeds from around the world are gathered together. never under control. We always have to be really, really ready for anything happening. The broadcast crew has to deal with live feeds from 35 locations simultaneously. If it was me in the race, I'd definitely be speeding up on a we can see that. The radio commentators supply stations worldwide. And finally, the TV voices, Tim Hutchins and myself, Nick Fellows. Can Ketima do it again? Can he break the record? Slowly but surely, you get sucked into the action. Who's fastest in Peru? Oh, Germany's going quick. But look what's happening in Austria. Then we go to Sweden, then we go to Norway. And that keeps you on the ball, on your toes, throughout the whole day. The heart of the facility in Austria, the Global Race Control. Here we have in the front row, which is the, all the executive team, so these guys are in charge of overseeing everything right now. And of course, as we have our different departments, they're in charge of different things from operations, who will be looking after the, the technical aspects of the event. Coordinators have their their nations that they have to look after and they keep quizzing them, they ask them if there's any problems, if there's anything going wrong and uh, hopefully we have everything going right. Now these guys are always under pressure because they look after the technical side of things and what makes our event unique and very special indeed is because we have 35 locations data all coming into one place so you can see how difficult that is. A big challenge for so many of the runners as we take a look at last year's winner, Elisa Molvik in Stavanger. She's settling into a nice early pace here, looking very comfortable. Astrid Kaltenbock, the winner in Verona last year, a strong Austrian runner, this year choosing to race in Brazil. And a new location in Japan, Takashima racing through the night. Martinez, one of the top athletes with the familiar red cap, certainly a runner to watch in Spain. And a good pace of front runners in Ljubljana, capital of Slovenia. And for the first time, seen here in St. Polten, Austria, wheelchair users racing on the same track. Push or pull, they're all part of the Wings for Life world run. Even those on a skateboard, like Jesse Swally from the United States of America. When I was eight years old, my brother got a skateboard for his birthday, and uh, I tried it out, and I thought it was pretty cool. I was stabbed in the back, and it cut my spinal cord. From the hip down on my left side, is paralyzed. When I was told I couldn't walk, that was pretty scary. You know, I thought, literally, I thought I was going to stay in a wheelchair the rest of my life. When I woke up in the hospital after the operation, they said I wouldn't be able to walk again. Uh, well, the first thing out of my mind is, if I can't walk, how am I going to skate? I thought about skating every day, and I had to wait 20 years to figure out I could still skate again. One day I got on my knees on my board and just jokingly pushed myself with my hands and started rolling forward, and I thought, hey, maybe I can skate like this. I do a lot of cool tricks. I mean, I ride on rails and go up on walls and stuff. But instead of wearing gloves, I made these things. I call them shoves. It's a half shoe and a half glove. So I, you know, that's what I push with. It was like a new door had been opened up again for me. The feeling is still the same. 
if I had my spinal cord cured today, first thing I'd do is go get some shoes and start jogging. I would. I'd want to see what it's like to run again. 20 minutes into the race, and for some, the sun is rising. For others, it is getting darker. The key to success is to take full advantage of the feed stations that the runners and athletes can find at every five kilometres along the track. It's raining heavily in Takashima, Japan, and it's also one of the three countries that is racing through the night. But this is what many of us predicted. Ketima and Huaman working together, placed one and two in this competition a year ago and now pushing each other in 2015. And one of the big stars of the competition in the catcher car, not running this year, Formula One champion David Coulthard, the stratosphere jumper Felix Baumgartner also takes to the catcher car in Bucharest, Romania. That's better, that's better. Keep it there. No! Janil, you have to drive at 15 kilometers an hour. Sorry. Now it's 15 kilometers an hour for the first hour. Okay. Then 16 for the next. Okay. Then 17, then 20, and then finally 35 kilometers an hour. Okay, good. But there is no finish line, so you will catch up with them, okay? Don't, don't worry. Now, the catcher cars all start at the same time all around the world. 35 tracks over six continents. And even David Coulthard is doing this. Really? Yeah. So if David Coulthard can do it, then you can. Sure, 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 we can do it. You guys all start 30 minutes after the runners. Okay. Then you get faster and faster until you've passed all the runners. Okay, okay. Now the last runner to be caught becomes the global champion of the Wings for Life World Run. Okay, cool. Okay, you can do it now. Slow down, just slow down. Slower. Sorry. It's focus, Jimmy. Focus. Slower, slower. Sorry. 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 So what, what, what are we going to do? I don't know. He just can't go slower. We're going to get there too quickly. I don't know. We're going to have to come up with some plan. There. There we go. Thirty minutes after race start, and it is the start of the catcher cars all over the world. And here they go, starting off at 15 kilometers per hour or 9.3 miles per hour. Then almost every hour, they accelerate their speed to a final 35 kilometers per hour or 21.75 mph. Catcher cars are off, which means the race is truly now on for everybody. Uh, it's an exciting moment when that happens, um, because for us, of course, it's the finish line and it starts to, to move with everybody else. I'm excited just looking at the screens and, and seeing how people are running and, and really how they've used their 30 minute head start. Well, you can see that the heat is taking its toll in Dubai. And how have the early runners used that 30 minutes before the catcher car starts to hunt them down? Already the fields are starting to get split and break up. The weather far from ideal in Porto. Verona, one or two of the top athletes settling into groups and finding a good, comfortable rhythm and a good, strong early pace. Melbourne in Australia, one of the three races through the night, the headlights. And look at this early pace from the South African. Mapasika Makuyana, way too fast, I'd say, in the early exchanges or early pace. And the first runners are caught by the catcher car around about 2.2 kilometers, but it's still a moment of celebration for the runners. All data is tracked by high technology in the car. Every runner is recorded by the timekeeping crew here in Spielberg. The 
time peak in itself for us is something that's pretty unique, um, but also it's linked quite a lot with the catcher cars, which is, just means it's compact and full of, of technology. And because we can keep track of, 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 of the runners literally all over the world, you can see how important for us that their role is in, in making sure things are, are pretty accurate. And when it comes to the finish, uh, a lot of responsibilities on their heads that every bit of information we get is spot on. Let's get back to the action, Brasilia in Brazil. Very important to use the feeding stations as often as you can to keep that momentum going. Still a lot of runners left in the competition here. A lot of hills to climb in uh, Dublin. And uh, Makahana still pushing it, 40 minutes done, and she's already at 11 kilometers over to St. Paulton in Lower Austria and already comfortably in the lead, last year's winners, Ketima and Huaman. And this is the story of last year's winner, an experience you can't buy, a journey around the world. I know the videos uh, by, by last year's Wings uh, for Life World Run and I have uh, some contact by Facebook also and I appreciate him, he's a strong athlete. Ich habe gesehen, im letzten Jahr Schnee in Österreich. Bei uns in Afrika es gibt es keinen Schnee. Vielleicht nur Kilimanjaro ganz oben. A great experience also for Elise Molvik. I actually got shocked. I was like, uh, is this for real? Because uh, it's so big yet. No podía creer cuando me enteró el premio una vuelta al mundo es increíble. Lemberg was asking for asylum here in Austria, so he has no travel documents, so he's not able to travel. But we found a very generous solution for him in terms of financially helping him in the future to stay here in Austria to start his life and his career as a professional sportsman. Meanwhile. Lemmerwerk Ketima is now recognized as a political refugee. Not quite as many kilometers for Elise Molvik to travel today, and she's got him with a good group of runners settling nicely. Over in India, again, the heat will be one of the telling factors. Yilan running in the night in Taiwan could be the best condition for the runners there. And again, Santiago, Chile. Well, the field is starting to get strewn out. Always time for a selfie in Alton, Switzerland. And the fun aspect is a major part of the Wings for Life world run. The web specialist and social media crew gets every picture to the world immediately. We are answering tweets, we're retweeting, we are answering questions on Facebook, we are reposting things, and that keeps us pretty busy. This year's innovation at the Wings for Life World Run is an app that brings the excitement of race day to training sessions all year. The virtual catcher car is prepping you either to race in an official location or on a selfie run. The selfie run, available through the app, opens the global phenomenon of the run to everyone, wherever they are, like Formula One driver Daniel Ricciardo. So uh, I'll be taking part uh, with the app in the selfie run and uh, I'll be running in Monaco. So wherever you are in the world, enjoy the run. It's going to be a great event. Well, the catcher car is starting to bring a lot of the runner's day to an end, as seen here in Dubai, in the searing heat and the heavy rain in Takashima, Japan. Cordero, an Olympic bronze medalist in marathon, is the men's leader in Brazil, and he's in a lovely frame of mind and rhythm here. Very comfortable indeed. Miriam Gosner, a world-class biathlete from Germany, showing her skills. and perhaps the most stunning location of them all, Niagara Falls in Canada. The global leader at this point in the competition is Andre Onofre, 15.9 kilometers in 55 minutes. Zanuki, the Italian, is not too far off the Romanian leader, running in Verona.
All smiles for so many when they're caught by the catcher car. It will take some time to get ahead of these two gentlemen. In the lead at the moment in St. Polten, Austria, Ketima and Huaman, as is Ljubljana in Slovenia. The Katakar driver in Norway is Axel Lundsvindal, the Olympic and world skiing champion, slightly off-piste, but he has to keep the speed at a constant. He has to go about his job wherever he drives that car. And for many, it's no hassle at all when they are caught because it's all for a good cause, running for those who can't. Will was out on his new horse, Sam, that would just jump anything. The horse did nothing wrong at all, just cantered along. Um, he'd, we'd jumped a post and rail, uh, which he jumped beautifully, and then cantering up towards the next one, Will just literally toppled off and just head-planted the, the ground. It was basically no hope or he would be brain dead because of the length of time he went without oxygen. They did heart massage on me and mouth to mouth to bring me back around uh, and then they put me into a, a coma. I didn't really know whether I was alive or dead. It was just a matter of hanging in there and being stubborn and not deciding I'd go the dead way. I wanted life. I found out about Wings for Life Run through my friend, my work colleague, Samantha. It helped us at that time give us a focus point. I think we're all struggling a little bit with what happened and that was something that everyone could get involved with. And I think it just helped us all really to pull together and have something to aim for. That they're all taking part in the world run makes me feel so proud. I would like to thank everybody who donates towards this and everybody who runs. They have my backing and my support and I would like to say thank you very much. Back to the women's competition, Japan Takashima and Okubu is the early leader in the women's event. Makanya in South Africa looking a little tired, has she pushed it too hard too soon? Haik Shoto in Portugal, comfortably ahead in the women's competition, but look at the weather coming off the Atlantic Ocean in Porto. And all smiles for Kelly Ann Very in Melbourne, Australia, enjoying her night run. Searing heat in Dubai. And look at this gentleman, 92 years of age and running in Georgia. But the weather will be one of the key factors throughout today's competition, so let's hear more. On the one hand, in Western Europe, we had quite wet conditions. So for example, in Porto, it's really blustery, so with gusty winds and also heavy rain. Scandinavia, we have very settled weather. It's calm winds and uh, lots of sunshine. And have a look to the night races, for example, Melbourne, we also have very good conditions. So only light wind and, yeah, temperatures around 10 degrees in Melbourne. And 10 degrees Celsius in Melbourne could be an advantage for many of the runners in stark contrast to the 30 degrees plus conditions in Dubai, for example. Martinez running in Spain, starting to make his mark in the men's competition. And still out there on his skateboard, Jesse Swale in Santa Clarita, California. Daniel Landat, an established Kenyan long-distance runner, dominating in India. And as predicted, Aaron Anderson leading in his wheelchair. This could be a record. This could be a first in the 2015 Wings for Life World Run. Sensational performance. 18.6 kilometres for Anne Ashton over in the United Kingdom as David Coulthard, the Grand Prix expert, reels them in over in the United Kingdom. Perfect conditions in Alanya in Turkey as the catcher car now starts to do its work. This is Okubu, current leader in Japan. In Gurgaon, India, Lina Chichia, Giotto leading in Portugal, but surely that weather will take its toll. 
and last year's winner, Elise Molvik in Stavanger, Norway. All oh, smiles. Isn't she looking confident yeah. and comfortable? The Wings for Life World Run 2015. 35 amazing long distance tracks around the globe on six continents. No time to enjoy the scenery for Chima Martinez, current leader of the men's competition in Spain. Current leader in Santa Clarita, 20.6 miles. Oh, look at that. There's still time for a bit of fun in Darmstadt, Germany. Never get old or weak, I think the translation is there. For many, the run is now over and it is definitely time to celebrate. It's congratulations all round. It's a race full of emotion. Okay. And getting the chance to be caught by David Coulthard is just part of the fun for many. We're getting down to the business end of proceedings here now. This is Danchi leading in uh, Bucharest. Van Nierkirk, the fastest of the women in South Africa. New leader in Japan. Watanabe has taken the lead. This is Hoik leading the women's competition in Munich, Germany, over in Brasilia. Kaltenberg, the Austrian runner. And Jesse Swally on his skateboard, 25 kilometers. It's come to an emotional end. Got it. What a magnificent performance from the American. I got you. Good job, good job, good job. That really does capture the emotion. It's over for Sloan, the winner in Dubai, by far the hottest of all the locations in 2015. The professionals now are starting to battle it out in both the men's and the women's competition. This is, is pretty strong, it's pretty good. It's a much faster than it was last year already, and we've got so many runners that are still in at this stage. As we're approaching that full marathon position, we've got about 4,000 runners still left in, which is pretty good. So we've got some serious runners out there competing. Well, the leading women are now passing the 30 kilometer mark and it is going to be very close indeed. If we make a calculation, the record from 2014 is right on track to be tumbled. The catcher car is picking them off slowly but surely in Verona, in Northamptonshire and Silverstone. One by one, the women's competition national champions are being crowned. And one by one, the fastest female runners are being caught by the catcher car. Molvik is still out there, but Elise Molvik, the 2014 champion, is she injured? But she certainly stopped running. There's nothing left. And Molvik may well be out of the chase for the global title. She picks it up again, the young Norwegian runner. But this is nothing like the performance we saw a year ago. And we can clearly see that Molvik is out there in trouble by far from her best. In complete contrast, look at these two working together. Ketema on the left, Huaman on the right, the Ethiopian and the Peruvian even sharing drinks. This is teamwork none of us expected, but these two have changed up a gear. They're now starting to push the rest of the world. Still running in the women's competition in uh, Bucharest. 
as we are in South Africa with uh, Van Niekerk pushing hard. And look at the pace that Watanabe over in Takashima, Japan. She is flying as more and more of the women are caught. This is Kaltenbock, the Austrian running in Brazil, taking her second national title. And Molvik has called it a day. 45 kilometers, no second global title for the Norwegian. It was good, nice weather, uh, way too windy, but it was nice. Well, as we've been saying throughout, the weather playing a key part for many of the athletes out there. And that is Hoik being caught. The winner in Melbourne has also been crowned. But look at these two gentlemen as we go back to the men's race. They look to have timed their move to perfection, but still running side by side. Last year's one and two, Ketima and Huaman looking very, very strong. The catcher car is drawing closer in Polzant. This is Calcaterra in uh, Verona, Italy. Now, Calcaterra is a man to watch, fourth in the competition last year. An experienced runner. Oh, Natalie Vasseur is out of the competition. Vasseur, who was runner-up last year, will not be in the top two for 2015 because look at the pace that Watanabe in Japan is laying down here. And perhaps the only other runner that can go with her is the lady on the left of your screens in South Africa, running in Cape Town, Rihanna Van Nierkirk. But it's Watanabe who looks the smoothest. Two stark, contrasting running styles. Van Nierkirk labouring with that running technique. As for Watanabe in Japan, she seems to be floating. But nonetheless, both of these athletes are still in the chase for the Wings for Life World Run global title for 2015. Now Watanabe looks to be tiring just a little. No matter what the outcome, the record from last year is about to tumble. 54.79, we're looking to be better here in 2015. Will it be South Africa? Will it be Nierkirk? Or will it be Watanabe in Japan on the left of your screens? Both of these athletes have the catcher car just over their shoulders. Van Nierkirk has one last dig. She digs deep, here's the car, and the South African goes into second position. Oh, what a wonderful run from Rihanna Van Nierkirk in Cape Town, South Africa. Watanabe has crowned the global champion, but Van Nierkirk has run her heart out to try and claim this title today. It was awesome, but it was tough, eh? <laughs> Yeah, even if you, even especially if you don't know where the finish line is, so the last uh, five k's was quite, quite hard. Well, Watanabe is still out there running. I'm not sure whether she knows she's won the global title or not. But here comes the catcher car in Takashima. And the Japanese athlete has said, enough is enough. She bows out 56.33 kilometers. Watanabe is the global champion in the Wings for Life World Run for 2015. <laughs> I'm super happy. <laughs> Who do you want to tell this to? Who do you want to tell this to? I'd like to share this moment with my family. Women's Race is 10 is a brilliant new record, of course. Uh, and for me, what is exciting, it's a new venue too in Japan. So Watanabe going to 56.33 kilometers is a, is a stellar performance. So I think she'll be pretty pleased with that. Congratulations to the Japanese athlete. Let's wrap up the men's competition now. This is Cesar Diaz Hernandez running in Santiago, Chile. Also Simon Monutu racing in France. They are the fastest man out there at the moment. But Ketima and Huaman are looking very good. Still working as a double act. This is quite remarkable. One of them's going to have to kick sooner or later. Surely. Well, Di Cecco and Calcaterra, the two still running in Italy. And again, another pairing that's working well. Martinez has gone. Shima Martinez in Spain, 59.9 kilometers, just over four hours of non-stop running as we go past the 60 kilometer mark. Oki is looking good down there in Japan. They're still running in Taiwan. Oh, Tom Payne, 61.1 kilometers, is caught by David Coulthard in Silverstone. 
and he gets a deserved congratulations from the Formula One star. And this truly is a remarkable story, quite possibly the story of this race. Aaron Anderson is about to win the Swedish competition and he's in his wheelchair. He's at 61.5 kilometres and going strong. Pinero is still leading in Portugal. Nuschwander is leading in Darmstadt, Germany. This race is still wide open. Nuschwander with a good rhythm there. Oh, and there goes Bauer. Matthias Bauer is out in Munich, 61.1 kilometres. Michael Wardian is leading down in Melbourne, Australia, running through the night skies. Ducoq leading in Romania at 63.8 kilometres, but he's been caught by the car. They're at 64 kilometres, a little bit of a climb here. Ketima and Huaman, and Ketima's making a breakaway and pushing now. And this could be the story in Lower Austria as Ketima is looking to break away. Oh, it's confirmed. Ketima now turns the pace up and draws clear of the Huaman and the Peruvian runner has nothing to answer. We're so close to, <laughs> to going close towards the record and still having so many people competing in. So it's exciting um, and I'm looking forward to see who actually does take this title because boy, Ketima wants to hang on to it, no doubt. Well, over in Sweden, Aaron Anderson is just about to be caught by the catchy car. He has won the national title in Sweden. 64.8 kilometres, 30th in the global rankings, 29 athletes left in the competition. But this is the Wings for Life World Run's first wheelchair winner. What a remarkable performance. We were told to watch out for him. He predicted that he'd be up there, and he hasn't disappointed. A spectacular and understandably emotional performance. It was it was a really, really tough day, but anyway, it was it was lovely just to start everything in Kalmar and everyone was just so happy and then you know the, the atmosphere and it was great and we just pushed over the bridge and and all the way out here on, on the island. It's been really, really hard with 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 the with the headwind, it's just been it's been a struggle the whole way, but it's you know it's been a lot of fun. Everybody's cheering. It's the atmosphere. It's just been great. What a performance of sheer determination! He predicted it, he produced it, and he's won it. Aaron Anderson, Sweden's champion. We are back on track. This is Hernandez in Santiago, Chile. He started off with a blistering pace in the early part of this competition. He's slowing a little towards the end. It's the opposite tactic for Limawerk Ketema of Ethiopia. He took it easy through the early stages and now he's digging deep and pushing hard. It's all over in Portugal. The same in Takashima, Japan. Oh, and Ljubljana. Radkovic is done in Kolumna in Russia. Oh, and Nuschvander looks to have a spate of the cramps, a slight injury as Nuschvander in Germany is about to be caught. Warden in Melbourne, Australia, is delighted with his performance. Well, Hernandez is one of the few still out there. He's tiring a little after setting that amazing early pace, but he's got a good advantage on the catcher car. Look at Ketema now, picking it up, pushing hard, and looking to close this off in the latter part of the competition. He too, clear of the catcher car. In Poland, uh, Ovczewski comfortably in the lead, but the catcher car looming. Now, this is one gentleman that we want to watch carefully. He's made the breakaway from Ducheco. This is Calcaterra passing the 77-kilometre mark. Calcaterra fourth in the competition last year. It's all over for Ovlewski in Poland, as it is in France. Simon Munutu. 
Delighted to have taken the French title. There are six runners left in the competition, two of them in Lower Austria, two of them in Italy. Nuenschwander is in Darmstadt, Germany, and Hernandez in Santiago. But it looks like that Nuenschwander will be the first of those six to be caught by the catcher car. He'd so hoped to go into the top three here just outside of the top flight but you have to say another spectacular performance his pacemakers doing a great job 74.2 kilometers in Darmstadt Germany Calcaterra in Italy is out on his own he's got away from De Cecco and Hernandez now is tiring he looked so good, but what he's able to compensate or what he's able to hold on to is the massive lead that he built up in the early part of the race. And that's what the Chilean runner is living off right now. Calcaterra is still pushing hard on the right of your screens in Italy. Well, as for Lima work, Ketema, he looks as comfortable as ever. You wouldn't think he'd been out there for nearly five hours. As for Juan from Peru, he's just behind Ketema, but surely now the Peruvian will be the next man to court. But believe it or not, it looks to me that Juan is pushing and finding another little bit of wind and speed. This is Calcaterra in Verona, Italy. Hernandez is slowing now. His dreams of taking the global title surely are slipping through his fingers. And I have to say, not a lot of room for the catcher car to get through. A huge entourage down in Santiago. Calcaterra, a very experienced ultramarathon and long-distance runner, adjusts the watch at 77 kilometers. Ketema, a little bit of grimace on the face, digging deep, picking up the pace once again. He's drawn clear of Ramigio Guman of Peru, looking to hold on to the Ethiopian. He's got him just within his sight. There is the catcher car drawing down on the Peruvian. A beautiful shot from the sky in Verona sees the catcher car getting closer to Calcaterra. And this is Calcaterra putting on one last little burst, digging deep the Italian. What a marvellous performance from Calcaterra, fourth last year. And Calcaterra's race is over, and it will be the same for Kuhlmann. There's now just one runner left in Lower Austria. That is at Lima work. Ketima, another great performance from uh, the Peruvian. Look at this from uh, Ketima. The cyclist looks. Hernandez is caught by the catcher car, and Ketima has done it! Hernandez will take second position. All the work was done in the early stages by the Chilean athletes. He's delighted to have taken his national title, but this is the man that did it a year ago. The question now, how far can he extend his own record? He goes past 78.57, and the catcher car is still behind the Ethiopian runner. We have a new record in the men's competition, as we've seen in the women. You can see there, Lima work looking behind. Has he got anything less? He's all alone. He's taken the global title for the second year of asking. Can he make 80 kilometers? That is now the mark for Ketema. Pushes one last boost, one last kick. And the catcher car stops the race. The winner, Lima work, Ketema. Top position in 2014, and he's done it again in 2015. And can you believe it? 79.9 kilometers. Breaking his own record, destroying the rest of the world to take the 2015 title. Thanks so much. I'm very happy uh, today. I'm very lucky because the weather it is very difficult and it's very tough uh, to pushing, uh, uh, so I'm uh, happy. Timing his run to absolute perfection, working as a team in the early stages, then making the kick, stamping his authority on the race in the closing stages, picking it up when others had no more.
yet again another success for us. The most ever that we had running, the most ever we had registered, and of course, new course records both on the men and the women's side. An incredible race with an incredible finish. 101,280 runners ran a total of 1,059,529 kilometers. That's 2.7 times the distance to the moon. And they were all running for those who can't. The Wings for Life World Run 2015. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for coming out here today at Silverstone. Everyone had an awesome run. Thank you very much to come here to run. Really well done, awesome stuff. Thanks to everyone from Wings for Life and everyone for taking part. I really appreciate you all supporting this great cause and rest assured uh, all your efforts have gone unnoticed. So see you out there again next year. I'm still completely adrenaline flashed. It was a great day for Wings for Life. Today we managed to raise 4.2 million euros and the nation are still coming in. It's fantastic. <laughs>